Okay, good afternoon to um, all of you. My name is Katerina Darchenko. I represent uh, non-profit uh, Institute for Democracy and Development. It's Ukrainian non-profit, which uh, uh, this year for nine years uh, working on uh, analytical issues on Ukraine, on um, um, policy analysis, on regulatory policy, and uh, um, now, um, working in uh, DC area, I see, of course, a tremendous interest to uh, Ukrainian question, to question about um, a recovery plan or Marshall's plan, um, a tremendous interest into real situation in Ukraine, because many people who work on uh, support now, who work on bills uh, um, in Congress which connect with Ukraine, understand uh, um, global process, understand global uh, policy, understand how to fight with Russian regime. But um, some people not really deeply involved to details inside Ukraine, inside Ukrainian economy policy, inside understanding of Ukrainian budget process, inside understanding of uh, um, transport strategy, energy strategy, and so on and so forth. So that's why we uh, create quite um, direct idea. It's idea of uh, seminars, conferences with uh, best Ukrainian professionals um, and best Ukrainian economists about current situation, about uh, recovery plan, and uh, build uh, um, this platform for cooperation between American professionals, um, so people from think tanks, uh, um, analytical workers, consulting companies who um, will work on Ukrainian issues, uh, decision-making persons as members of uh, um, House, members of Congress, the staffers, and of course, um, government representatives who work on Ukrainian issue, such as people in the um, Department of State, in uh, Department of Defense, in uh, U.S. Treasury, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, the first uh, our discussion is a discussion um, about uh, Ukrainian recovery and economy growth, and uh, uh, we um, invite uh, to this discussion people who now work on um, this issue and uh, work uh, for several months with um, uh, their teams. So uh, it's uh, Vladimir Landa, Forbes company deputy editor in chief. Um, so he work on calculating um, and uh, data uh, from Forbes uh, um, in Ukraine. Also, he was advisor of Minister um, of Economy of Ukraine, half of research Research in uh, UFC Capital, uh, it's the biggest like investment company, and uh, um, here uh, in university studies economical cybernetics uh, in Kiev um, uh, National Economic University. Also uh, today uh, with us uh, Andrei Dligach, uh, one of the most famous entrepreneurs, and uh, he uh, now he represents international national agency um uh, lunar uh, troubleshooting and central um, in central and eastern Europe, also head of Gosh Strategy Center, founder of iVentures Holding uh, of Internet Projects. Um, also, um, he uh, work as business strategist in Ukraine, founder of civil platform uh, Nova Kraina, um, co-founder of Free Green Movement, uh, Health Nation, working with uh, national um, health uh, uh, committee and working in this sector more than 20 years. Uh, Helena Halo, Vice President of Association of Ukrainian Banks, uh, uh, which uh, one of the biggest community of bankers, uh, founder of Financial and Analytical Center Transformation, financial expert banker. And um, she is uh, uh, also not only a banker, but also a mother and uh, um, uh, famous woman, woman leader in uh, 
uh, in Ukraine. Um, so uh, Pavlo Kutuyev, he will join us, uh, his professor of sociology and chair of sociology department of Igor, Igor Sikorsky, uh, Kiev Polytechnic Institute. Uh, so he's a famous sociologist, political scholar and international researcher. Um, so you can see his work also on English as well um, in internet. Um, also, uh, we waiting on this discussion, Viktor Andrusiv, uh, he's Ukrainian political and civil activist, director of Kiev School uh, of Public Administration, former executive director of Ukrainian Institute for Future since 2016, and Viktor is known in civil political activity. So he um, wrote a lot for Ukrainska Pravda, for Hlavkom, um, and uh, uh, you can see his analytical work also on the Institute for Future website. Anatoly Yarovy, attorney in law, so he's senior partner of Interpol Law Firm. Uh, also, uh, he worked with uh, Vasil Kisil and partners and studies uh, Kiev School uh, of Public Administration. So he also worked on uh, Ukrainian recovery plans and lawsuits against Russia. Um, Spavel Sebastianovich, uh, entrepreneur, public figure. Um, uh, he, Pavel is a common sense uh, studio resident. Uh, also, Pavel very very famous blogger in um, economy terms, and uh, he also leads a group of economists who are now thinking about recovery of Ukraine. Also, I um, um, I I invite. Uh, um, some other speakers from political uh, sector in Ukraine, former and current politicians, if they will join us today, I will uh, represent them as well. And um, yes, and I think that uh, we can start. So our format is uh, short reports uh, from um, our agenda. So every speaker will have uh, seven minutes for um, their report. And uh, um, the most uh, interesting for Western audience, which I know like from uh, this DC work, it's of course like uh, understanding of methodology of counting loses for now, because we see that it's more than 300 billion. So uh, almost the same, um, the same number of money as we have here in US uh, on on, uh, frozen assets. Uh, so uh, also um, uh, they're interested in our vision of potential compensation. So how it must must be through government or through um, or through grants or through entrepreneurs or through Ukrainian banks. So how this compensation must uh, looks like and what the legal base we see um, for, for, for that. Uh, also, um, uh, Western partners are very interested of our vision on Lugano proposals and uh, uh, Ukrainian recovery plan, which was presented by uh, cabinet of ministers of Ukraine, because some people said that, oh, it's only narratives. Some people said that it's a good document, but uh, many people ask like uh, also details about methodology of counting these uh, numbers, which we have in, in, in these documents. And uh, of course, um, understanding of uh, uh, key, um, key uh, KPI, yeah? so how we count KPI of effectiveness of our government now, uh, even in um, economy issues of uh, using Western money, and how we will do accountability and uh, um, control on this money in future. It's it's very very big issue, and it's very big issue which uh, will uh, discussed uh, in the next session of Congress. You know that many new members of uh, Parliament now uh, we have in the uh, house. Um, so that's why this KPI and understanding of KPI are uh, very interesting for Western partners. And of course, some information about stakeholder maps. So who really in charge? Uh, is it only like one political group or it's different political groups? How uh, business associations involved? What's the role of civil society? So it's short overview um, of terms, which on my uh, modest opinion, it's interesting 
interesting for a Western audience and we must share with uh, them. Um, so uh, please, I uh, think that uh, um, Mr. Landa can, can present his overview of uh, economy losses and uh, also potential recovery. So please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Katerina. Uh, as far as I am the first speaker, let me uh, have some introduction to what is happening in the Ukrainian economy right now. Uh, the main uh, result of the year 2022 that uh, the economy of Ukraine has survived. Uh, back in the spring, the Ministry of Finance predicted a decline in Ukrainian uh, GDP for 33 to 50 percent. Ministry of Economy predicted minus 40 percent. In the second half of the year, it became clear that uh, the reality would be uh, a bit uh, better than such pessimistic forecasts. Even uh, massive shelling of the energy infrastructure could not change this, according to our estimates. Uh, these shellings reduce the country's annual GDP by 0.1, 0 0.2% per week for the period uh, they uh, periodically take place. Despite this, the current estimate of the fall of in GDP for 2022 is 30.4%, uh, uh, much higher than most uh, forecasts. Uh, March 32 uh, in previous year seems to have been the worst day for the economy if it uh, were possible to track GDP on a daily basis. Uh, it uh, was the day of the maximum advance of Russian troops and uh, into the territory of Ukraine. Uh, direct losses of to infrastructure facilities amount to uh, 138 billion, according to Kiev School of Economics. That's, uh, I let me emphasize, only direct uh, losses. Uh, that's not even a half of total losses for country and business. Uh, government uh, talks about uh, 500 to 600 billion in total losses, but this figure may be overestimated since some uh, cases uh, double counters, uh, double counting. For example, business losses and government spending to compensate these losses. However, in any case, we can. Uh, uh, say that total amount of damage from Russia, Russia is hundreds of billions of dollars, or as you say, it's uh, probably 300 billion. And we understand that uh, this amount is uh, growing every day, especially during the days of uh, uh, massive uh, rocket attacks. So how will the recovery go? There are many platforms uh, where preliminary consultations of, on this issue take place. At the same time, we understand that until the end of the war, until the end of the war, uh, at least uh, the uh, hot phase of this war, the, they will not uh, give final ready-made recipe or final algorithm of actions. Uh, however, uh, the role of such, such summits, uh, which uh, take place in Lugano, Davos, uh, Luxembourg, and other cities, is important for establishing links between participants uh, and shareholders of uh, recovery uh, process and so governmental uh, and civil society in uh, Ukraine and uh, partner countries. And, uh, I also note that uh, this week, uh, U.S. International Development Finance Corporation is operating in Ukraine. This is an effective mechanism for attracting private American capital to uh, Ukrainian economy. We can uh, talk about uh, Russian co uh, uh, compensations after the war, but uh, Ukrainian business requires capital and uh, other types of help uh, to today. So uh, this mechanism would provide uh, Ukrainian business with such kind of um, capital. There's uh, a number of uh, instruments in the toolbox, like uh, cheaper loans, like insurance of military and credit risks. And uh, these types are very appropriate for the current uh, period when we are talking about uh, how um, Ukrainian economy can be helped uh, already now before waiting at the end of the war. In, uh, uh, in uh, and uh, last thing I want to say in uh, the first word, uh, on the West, uh, it is popular uh, popular uh, thing that uh, 
corruption is very popular in Ukraine. However, currently we have a, a some different situation. Uh, this year, a uh, new index of corruption perception uh, is uh, published, and uh, Ukraine have uh, the best uh, number for the all uh, years of this uh, number is calculated. We have uh, uh, most active week, uh, uh, most active anti-corruption week uh, uh, for all the time I could can remember. We have a lot of actions made just for last few days. And uh, it is announced that that's a very beginning uh, of uh, the corruption fight in uh, Ukraine. So um, uh, uh, really perception of corruption in Ukraine is uh, changed uh, significantly since uh, the full scale invasion uh, of Russia began because uh, it became absolutely unacceptable in Ukrainian society, uh, which is uh, not the same, which it was even a year ago. Uh, every dollar is monitored and uh, civil society uh, take a look on every every aid uh, uh, that uh, is coming to Ukraine. Uh, so let, let me take a break and to give uh, a floor to the next speaker. Yes, thank you so much. I also show to our partners this website of uh, Kiev School of Economics, where so Vladimir mentioned the um, counting of losers. As I know, also Western partners support uh, this project uh, for counting these losers. But um, when I explore it, uh, am I understand right that it's like? Uh, loses how people declare it so it's with loses without audit um, so it's like first data um, can you explain please a little bit about methodology of this counting uh, as i understand kic methodology mm -hmm. they count only uh, as you say fixed and uh, uh, direct losses that uh, doesn't count uh, how much company loses in logistics, how they uh, uh, invest in uh, relocating their uh, employers, so that all that so what is not uh, counting in this figure, this uh, is not the latest one which uh, which are sh shown right now. as I as I um, remember, the latest figure is one hundred thirty eight billion of uh, direct loans. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. So uh, you also can go to this website and see uh, like uh, methodology of this count and they have PDF. So um, you can easily uh, also see by uh, industries this loses. OK, on the next um, like round of our discussion, we will um, um, take your points about reforms and about what reforms and uh, perception of society need to um really realize this uh, um uh, recovery plan so uh now i uh, will ask uh, mr uh, dlihac to give his overview and he also have uh, a presentation to share with us so uh, andre now you can do that uh, you host of conference and uh, yeah please uh, floor is yours mm. Uh, thank, thank you very, very much, much. Yes, Katarina. It's, it's really great to to share with uh, our uh, colleagues the information we have concerning uh, Ukrainian economy and uh, its perspectives. First of all, I'd like to mention that um, I'm an ideologist and coordinator of development of Ukrainian national economic strategy, uh, which was. Um, made and uh, even approved uh, before this um, full-scale invasion. Um, from uh, another po po point of view, I'm representing a coalition of Ukrainian business communities. More than 95 organizations are uh, jointly established in this community in order to elaborate economic strategy uh, together with uh, uh, Ministry of Economy and other government authorities. So we are monitoring the situation in the Ukrainian economy and the Ukrainian business. 
uh, every month uh, we prepare the special reports uh, on Ukrainian business and every quarter on Ukrainian economy. Uh, now we see that uh, Ukrainian business uh, lost more than $60 billion directly and uh, direct way. Uh, almost third part of Ukrainian enterprises are stopped or almost stopped their activity. Uh, we have uh, 64% of turnovers uh, in small and medium enterprises uh, compared to previous year. Uh, so Ukrainian business uh, faced a lot of problems, not only uh, problems connected with, uh, with the invasion, but also with the, uh, our government authorities and uh, their behavior, uh, their strategy during this war. Uh, main our topic, uh, as Katya mentioned, uh, is Lugano plan. Uh, as a first um, integrated and big uh, document um, which represents our uh, Ukrainian vision of uh, recovery. But the main problem of this uh, plan is that uh, despite of uh, more than 3,000 of experts uh, took part in pre pre preparation and developing of this plan, but uh, uh, we worked without common vision, without enough analytics, in not in not integrated way, and uh, this plan, rather portfolio of projects, nor um, plan with policies, state policies. So we started uh, another. Uh, process now in order to again jointly with uh, government authorities, cabinet of ministers and uh, civil experts to develop uh, the plan of Ukrainian modernization. In May 2022 in the conference in London the economic uh, forum uh, where uh, Ukraine was represented by a minister of economy with other government authorities, with civil society and Ukrainian business. And uh, we, uh, we made special agreements with uh, our international partners from the different international institutions um, about four points. First point is that now we uh, then in May last year agreed that the process of Ukrainian recovery and modernization should start that time. Second point was not to recover, but to modernize, modernize Ukrainian infrastructure, the uh, Ukrainian government, the Ukrainian economy in general. Third point was uh, Ukrainian leadership. It means that uh, Ukrainian vision should be the the basic document for this modernization plan. And first point connected with inclusive process, but uh, now this process completely broken. Uh, we found out that international partners uh, do not want to, to uh, speak or to, to, to even uh, to, to analyze this possibility to make a special fund, uh, which will be uh, used by Ukrainian government in order to recover and modernize the Ukrainian economy because of the corruption. From the other hand, the Ukrainian government uh, considered uh, all this time that uh, uh, Ukrainian leadership means that we will have access, direct access to, to the fund, uh, future, uh, future Ukrainian recovery and modernization fund with $750 billion uh, calculated in, in the Lugano plan. Our, our offer to our international partners to the Ukrainian government was to change the, the model in, onto a triangle model uh, where joint with international partners, Ukrainian uh, civil society will have possibility to realize anti-corruption strategy. And jointly with the Ukrainian government, Ukrainian business uh, communities and civil society can realize Ukrainian interests and, and, and the Ukrainian uh, prioritized vision. Why we consider that it's possible? Uh, this picture explains a lot concerning uh, concerning Ukrainian future and what we 
decided to do since 2013. Um, horizontal dimension, it's a dichotomy, political dichotomy between economic dichotomy between conservation of ex-Soviet um, economic system and innovative system. Vertical dimension is political one from the paternalism and uh, closed access to open access uh, to, to the trust system, etc. Ukraine made its uh, decision in 2013, and we once again uh, repeated this decision in 2022. It is why you, we should speak not about Ukrainian um, democracy or resilience, because in fact, we're a democratic country, in fact, we're a resilient country with resilient economy and infrastructure. What we really need is to have a possibility to realize our will, our vision, and um, our freedom. It is why we decided to, uh, to make the strong uh, union between uh, business communities. More than 95 business communities declared their economic vision, uh, most attractive economic environment, uh, innovative in, uh, country with their um, um, economic growth based on the human capital development and entrepreneurship, modernized economy, um, resilient economy, and uh, the best environment for realization of uh, human potential. It is why also we made a uh, Lugano declaration uh, between more than 300 of civil organizations not business, but civil organizations, which declared the same principles uh, for, for modernizing of Ukrainian uh, society, government, uh, government structure, and um, to have this modernized future. Thank you. Yeah, can, uh, can I ask you, Andri, uh, one question that... Um, sure. Um, it's a hard question, but many people said that, okay, if in Ukraine you have corruption as a problem, um, all people who will do works in Ukraine, it will be Western companies. So like 90% it will be Western companies. And um, we um, haven't in this situation so deep involvement of uh, our businesses because like main contract um, will be Western contract. What do you think about like this uh, perspective? And uh, I agree with you and uh, I think... Um, we will uh, see also position of our economists about diversification of this plan. But uh, how it can look like in reality? Because if we uh, look into uh, our plan of cabinet of minister, I, I will show uh, this plan also to all um, of uh, other group. But uh, um, now it's not realistic roadmap for work. So how on your perspective give to Ukrainian business associations, civil society and business groups more involvement to this process and not formally, like you mentioned, like in paternalistic countries that formally we have work group of very loyal economists, but in reality, thank you. Um, first of all, Ukrainian corruption uh, from one hand is uh, overestimated, from the other hand, uh, underestimated. We really have huge level of corruption, but uh, it doesn't mean that we have uh, not um, real free economy, free capitalist uh, economy. We, in fact, we have a market economy for small and medium enterprises and very corrupted and monopolized economy from the other hand and uh, in the sense of several industries. But we found out solutions that this solution is controversial compared to recommendation for our international partners. Uh, I think that it could be very interesting for, for you. Uh, usually we understand, we consider um, the corruption in Ukraine as a so kind hydra uh, with a lot of heads and we are trying to to cut these heads by by uh, making new 
administration principles or introduce a new anti-corruption uh, institution like uh, National Anti-Corruption Bureau or some, some other institutions. But in fact, we have we still have uh, corruption. Uh, the size of this corruption is one third part of Ukrainian budget. Uh, why? Because this hydra cannot be uh, cannot be solved by head cutting. Uh, it have new new heads instead. So we need to completely change the idea of Ukrainian economy. Uh, this corruption corrupted economy should be completely uh, rebuilt. We found out five five uh, sources of Ukrainian corruption: state enterprises, uh, public purchases, regulation system, taxation system, and custom. And we uh, we proposed and uh, elaborated and even agree with the um, progressive part of Ukrainian government uh, these ideas of Ukrainian reforms. Uh, the first reform should be anti-corruption uh, tax reform. Uh, it's presented and we need strongly, we need uh, support of our international partner uh, in promotion of these uh, anti-corruption taxation uh, reform taxation system reform uh, what we need we just need uh, understanding from their uh, position that uh, um, decreasing of ukraine of um, of um, um, tax rates in ukraine is not uh, many uh, the only uh, to decrease the um, overloading of ukrainian business but this way is to make corruption in taxation system uh, senseless. Uh, we made a lot of models concerning this and see that uh, this pro proposal will uh, will increase the Ukrainian budget. Second position is custom. Uh, it's a it's a very corrupted system, but but we need to make it absolutely electronic and absolutely clear. Uh, the next point privatization. We cannot uh, improve um, co corporate management uh, principles in Ukraine because we have high level of standards, but still we have corruption there. The only way on the current uh, um, stage of Ukrainian development is privatization. The same with regulation. Deregulation is our way. And then the last uh, point is um, uh, what to do with uh, public purchases. We need working anti-monopoly committee in Ukraine. It's, again, we need help of our partners. Thank you. Thank you, Andrei. We will continue this part of discussion. It's very interesting, like points which.